Martin. So we'll check this the, as Murphy comes across the start finish line to commence another lap. See what the gap is. It was 8.4 last time around. Well, Murph goes across the line. Now, Scaife will give us a true indication. 10.4, so he's gained two seconds on Scaife on that lap. 10 seconds plus 10 seconds. And Mark was a lap or so behind Greg Murphy's stop, so he's just taking a lap longer to cycle temperature to the tyres and get the car into top racing trim. So this is going to be an interesting contest. You can see there John Bow trailing Mark Scaife up Mountain Straight. He'll go past his teammate in the Triple Eight car, John Clellan. Down in uh, the Aussie Mile Garage, they're still crunching some numbers. What's going on, Rusty? Well, Matty, they reckon they can make car uh, 21 last until lap 138 before the need for fuel. They'll give it a splash, a double stint for John Bow all the way to the line. But to compound this problem, he's got a little bit of a radio, a radio drama. He can hear them sometimes, but not always. It's yeah. the way it works on the mountain. Intermittent radio signals are always easy to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it sounds like. Yeah. Here's a replay of uh, an incident involving Mark Scaife getting a little bit tangled up with John Bow. A lot tangled up, in fact. Now, I was looking at that shot of Scaife coming up toward the cutting. I thought there was some damage on the left-hand door. This is where it happened. Look, got a big dent in there. We've been going now for five hours, 32 minutes under race conditions. Mark Scaife's back door keeps flipping open. He's trying to chase down Greg Murphy, who started from pole position and is now in sight for his third Bathurst crown. Can he put Rick Kelly on the podium as the youngest ever winner? We'll find out. It was plastic bags. This year, it's the left rear door on Mark Skates, Holden Racing Team Commodore. While that door is flapping open, it may well be closing on his opportunity to win a third consecutive Bob Jane T-Marts 1000. He'll have to pit or possibly face a black flag. And this is a nightmare for Holden fans and of course the team itself while well, this man Greg Murphy is tucking into some pretty neat lap times and has a 12 second margin oh he's got his head down Billy he's just on a 10 neat 9-3 for Scaife the gap 11.3 seconds and we might have an update on the situation with Scaife's flapping door let's go down to the pits Mark just followed Jeff Greck up to Paul Taylor and the Avesco officials that uh, operate pit lane here Jeff's Obviously, you know, concerned by the fact that in that incident between John Bow and Mark Scaife, it's broken the lock on that rear door, so it's just flapping on its hinge occasionally. Jeff is adamant it is not a dangerous situation. They see no reason to pit. He's conveyed that opinion to the Avesco officials. They've not yet said whether there's going to be any action over this. Having said that, HRT is standing by with big, big pieces of, uh, of race tape in case Mark has to pit at the moment. They've got their fingers crossed. Well, it's not up to Avesco, it's up to... Um race director and the clerk of course what's limiting the door from swinging completely open is the driver ventilation duct the NACA duct that's actually up in the window there and Ambrose comes in to take his final stop and uh, Darrell's there incidentally uh, Ellery's short shifting to conserve fuel it's marginal for him at the moment Marcus is in the pits here again. This team was definitely just fuel and tyres as they had to pit earlier before with that front tyre delaminating. They've had to come in again now just to take that bit extra fuel on. Not having a good run these boys this weekend. I don't think he got his screen cleaned either as per his request. And it's hard in the late afternoon here when you head up to the cutting, the sun gets right in your eyes and if you've got garbage on the screen, or did he get it cleaned? I'm not sure I didn't see it, but... Uh, that's him around here. In car in front of you. Well, not only has Greg Murphy and before him Rick Kelly been very consistent on the times, but their challenges in the form of Scaife and Bow in particular have both had dramas. So too, we know, has Ambrose and Ellery, Lowndes and Seaton. So all the guys in position to have a crack at the Kmart number 51 car have had something go astray. 
And remember at the top of the show, Matthew, we said, well, can Greg Murphy get through a big day without being a trouble magnet? Well, the answer to the question so far is yes. There's 21 laps to go. And it's everybody else that's been attracting the trauma. Good chance of Craig Lowndes and Glenn Seaton getting on the podium here this afternoon. John Bauer is currently running third, 4.5 seconds behind Scaife, but he has to make a final stop for fuel. And that's going to move Lowndes and Seaton up to third, and Ellery up to fourth. And Ellery's the one that I was talking about before that's short shifting to conserve fuel because when he last pitted, in car number 31, it was lap 130, so he's got to do 31 laps. It's right on the nervous edge of the fuel burn. We've just been running green, full green since lap 79. 139, it's quite often a phenomenon in this race. We have a number of uh, shunts and spins and blow-ups, lots of safety cars in the first half of the race, and then once all those cars are cleared off, we quite often have long, long periods of flat-out green running. That's what we've had this afternoon. Yeah, I'm just down here with the Stone Brothers. That one of those wheels that has come off the car again has delaminated. Dunlop have checked the pressures every time these fronts have come off. The pressures have been fine, but uh, it's definitely something going on here, Cromley, and they've all been in a corner, huddled around discussing about it. They did try tyres, diagonals, tyres that had done different mileage on the front, and it's been happening all day. Just spoken to the officials again in pit lane here, and the word is they will just continue to monitor the Mark Scape situation. No, uh, I guess, judgments of any kind at this point in time. Also, because John Bauer is having difficulty here in the Aussie Mail team, they've resorted back to the old pit board. They've written in big black writing, stay in the car, JB. They want him in there for the other step, the last step. It's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> There's something weird going on with uh, those front tyres on the SBR car, so they've either got a suspension geometry issue that we know that they get great temperature in their tyres in the typical sprint rounds. We see the evidence of it by the lap times, but maybe that very same setup trait when you do long distances around here at very high speeds on the straights. It could be a camber thing, a caster thing. It might be something to do with the tyre banging up into the shotgun panel up in the inner guard. I don't know. There's a million different options. Something not right. But there's something not right. Yeah. And it's been, uh, I guess it's rearing its ugly head now because they've been struggling with a balance problem all week. And they had a problem last year which resulted in, I mean, you don't pay attention totally to the other teams, but didn't they have flats here last year as well? Wasn't Wheel leading at one point when he had a flat? They were certainly in plenty of uh, bother. And uh, it's just funny the Stone Brothers just haven't managed to crack the code here for a number of years. They were the last Ford team to win here, in fact, back in 1998. But since then, they really struggled to get into the zone, be it the mechanical setup of the car or the drivers that they've used. They haven't been able to tick all the boxes. Cruising along there, elbow resting on the door, a la Peter Brock. 10-3 on his last lap, Ellery 10-6. Steve Ellery's still doing good times, given that he's in semi-conservation mode. He's just taking a couple of hundred revs out of the shift. And there's Marcus, who's dropped to ninth after that stop. Remember, the point score favours survivors. And uh, the winners in the 2003 season, first, second and third, don't really get as much of a yield as they have in previous years thinking about the contribution these points will make to the championship including this race the six races to come the next one's up at the gold coast and then marcus there's ritter behind you if you want to let them go just let them go we've got to look after these sides and get to the finish race so you might want to knock the pace off a little make sure we get to the end without having to stop again and that's effectively 10th position on the line Marcus Ambrose and the Aussie Mail racing crew makes it very clear. Got to stay in the car, <laughs> I'm sure that would be easy to read from the car. <laughs> yeah. Stay in the car, JB, I think it's supposed to say. Yeah. It's very high tech. Yes. Well, the radio's not working and they've gone back to the old system of uh, holding boards out, the old Sh board signals. Should we email him? <laughs> So Murphy, 10.9 seconds, the gap between himself and Mark Scape. It hasn't moved. They're slogging it out. 2.09.49 for Murph and 9.52 for Scape. But that gap remaining fairly static. I believe uh, JB's teammate Brad Jones is down in pit lane with the headsets on. 
but he's just had to bail out, so we haven't crossed to Bradley just yet, because I think JB will be pretty close to his final stop. It'll be a fraught moment down there in the Aussie male pit. It's going to move Craig Lowndes up to third. <laughs> You've got to say, Lowndes and Seaton, I don't think he would have banked on them being on the podium earlier in the day. Total time loss here when you just do um, a splash and go, bolt the tyres on without the driver change. Probably going to be about 67 seconds is the total time departure from your normal time profile. That is, to get in, stop, do the job, get out and rejoin. It's a lot of time. If you add that to where John is in the field at the moment, it uh, plummets him back down the order. My maths aren't that good. It's just a long way. <laughs> it's a tough bit. Mounds is uh, 35 seconds behind Bow. My 4.30 wake-up brain doesn't compute at this point in time. <laughs> so based on Crompton's uh, calculations there, you should rejoin about 40 seconds behind if everything goes to plan. It's just amazing how much the field will spread out when you go this distance without a safety car. The reason Bradley's uh, snuck away and not wanting to talk to us is because they don't have comms with John. They're concerned that he hasn't got the message. I think it was Chris Maney that had the board up there saying, stay in the car. If he didn't see it and didn't recognise it, his instinctive response is to leap out of the car, which would be a bit ugly if Bradley was talking to us and John gets out of it. And let's not forget that process starts when you're on your way down Conroy. It's actually quite a business. Mind you, the buckle up procedure is pretty simple if you do stay in there because the fuel will take a fair bit of time. So they'll sort it out. And has he seen the sign? Uh, that'd be the stay in the car message. Yeah. Bradley looks so much better with that thing on his head, doesn't he? <laughs> Greg Greg Rust. Rust, yeah. Well, that's the reason Brad had to bolt, guys, because they couldn't talk to John before. They weren't sure whether John knew that he needed to stay in this car for the final stint. Car's away, and it's just amazing the way they go back to... We might try and get a, a shot of this if we can. This. The way they go back to some, some basics here in situations like this. Craig Lowndes taking over third spot. And Ellery moves into fourth. Bow just... Wandering along pit lane here with the speed limiter on, it must be agonising. This is... Yeah, it's last a shame thing. for these guys, mm. but I thought they were going to be a big chance this year. And uh, I'd uh, love to see me little mate from Aubrey uh, finally score one. It's the holy grail for Brad. It is grand final, the Melbourne Cup. It's the day for these guys. John Bowes tasted it before, Bradley Jones hasn't. The way things are going, he'll have to wait another year because the way things are going, Greg Murphy's going to the top of the tree on the biggest race day that we've got all year. Back after this. There's 16 laps to go now, Billy. And around here, that's a oh. touch under 100 kilometres worth of racing to go. These guys are racing for position too. This is the fight for fifth. John Vow, he's had Stephen Richards climbing all over him in the Castrol Commodore. Look how close they are as they come down Conrad Strait into the chase, hard under brakes into the left-hander. Richo attacks on the outside. Bow driving defensively has not provided an opportunity for Richards. And it's been getting pretty hot and heavy, let me tell you. And early in the day, race control won't tolerate too much defensive driving. But late in the day, all bets are off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Richo's... <laughs> well, you can yell and scream all you like, but John Bow is taking a conservative line down the inside. They are fighting for position here. He's going to use every trick that he knows. I believe uh, Bradley Jones is joining us now. Are you there, Brad? I certainly am. Uh, JB's pretty good at making this car wide at the right time of the day. <laughs> Two pretty difficult guys to pass out there <laughs> having a dice at the moment. Oh, look, you know, JB's just trying to get his eye in on those cold tyres. And um, Cr Cromley, you know what it's like when you're out there and you've got someone all over you that's, you know, got their eye in and up to speed. You, you just, you know, got to get in their way, really, until you can have a bit of a clear shot at it. So he skipped.